Welcome to Hamago. That means hanging out, messing around, and geeking out. And tonight is a very special edition. Not only are we doing a build along, and I'm going to use my new USB microscope, but I've decided, uh, in honor of the pataphysical slot machine, to uh, do this in full pataphysical regalia. For those of you who are wondering, and in fact, in a week or two, I'm going to do a, another build-along for wearables in which I'm going to put some lights and a soft switch on this thing. But uh, tonight, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build a little standalone blinking LED in, three, in, in as many colors as you want. It's a red, green, blue uh, LED, and you can mix those colors in software. And, uh, and we're going to make it self-contained because uh, you know when uh, Arduino has a great little uh, uh, proto prototyping board that makes it easy for you to mock up circuits and try them out, but of course you don't want to carry your prototyping board plugged into your computer um, around with you if you're going to create a work of art. So that, this is actually how I got into Arduino was I wanted to make this sculpture of mine that I had made. I wanted to make the eyes uh, blink in different colors and then blink faster and faster and then slower and slower. So that's what got me started. And you can see that the sculpture is hollow inside and it's got a bunch of stuff going on inside. I'm going to show, give you a, a closer look at the stuff in a minute. So. Um, that consists of um, a thing, which is my sculpture, and inside that thing I've put a number of components. So let me show you what I've got here set up uh, today, but first, uh, brief introductions. Can everybody introduce themselves a little bit? Well, Jeff, do you want to introduce yourself? Just unmute. Great. Sure. Hi, I'm Jeff Sonstein. I'm here in Rochester, New York. and uh, I'm uh, trying to learn how to play with uh, Arduinos a bit, so I thought I'd hang out with some other folks who were trying to learn. Okay, great. Uh, I, I know that, Jeff, I know that you know a whole lot more about how the software works and probably how the electronics uh, work, so I'm just kind of a, a little past novice myself, but welcome, welcome, Jeff. Justin, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Justin, and I built some very... Uh, uh, small specific Arduino things from kits, but I'm excited to learn how to sort of build things a little bit more without uh, following an existing pattern, how I could come up with something in my mind and then make it electronic and portable. So thank you. Okay, Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, yeah, my, my name is Mark Finnan, and I'm uh, only living five minutes away from Howard, and uh, uh, once in a while I come by his maker shop uh, on Saturdays, which is really cool. And uh, I would like to, yeah, um, do some hardware hacking and, and ran to the Radio Shack to, to get a couple of things. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm doubtful I will be able to uh, really get it going. So so um, looking forward to see this. Well, the good news here is that um, exclusively for those of you who have joined us in this Geek Out, I've got a link that I'm going to put in the chat. And that link is to... It's a shortened URL. And if you go there that will lead you to um, a Google Doc that has a complete step-by-step -step instructions, um, including pictures. So um, I'm going to do some screen sharing and, and show things on that, that Google Doc in a, in a few minutes. But uh, now I think you can see um, what I've got laid out here. I've got a, an RGB LED. And what that means is if you look at the leads to this LED, you'll, you'll see that there's one that's longer than the rest, and that's the common ground. And by common, I mean that there are actually three other, LED, three other LEDs in here. 
One's a red, one's a green, and one's a blue. And so they each have two poles for the electricity to come in and out. One of them is one of, is one of these, and the other one is the common uh, ground pin. And so it's maybe not as visible as it should be, but you can tell that the common ground pin is the one that's longer than the rest, and that's important. Um, and you can, you can remember which are the colored uh, LEDs, because the, the one short one that's by itself on one side of the common pin, that's the red, RGB, goes in that order. And so then there's the G and the B, the green and the blue. And, and we're going to make colors actually in the Arduino software um, by mixing how much of each of those LEDs um, are going to, to get current. Um, we've also got here the Teensy Duino. So this is a very small version of the Arduino. It's got the, the usual stuff. It's got, got the uh, microcontroller chip, and it's got a um, micro USB that you can plug into your computer and get the um, code from. Uh, and it's got um, little pins where you can connect wires. You can't see that very well, but there's a diagram for it that's backwards here on the camera. Um, but you see that one is marked as minus and one is marked as plus. And so minus is ground, GND, and plus is um, where uh, your voltage in goes, and that's called VIN here. So whatever chip you've got, there's a place for your, your voltage, either 3.5 or 5.5 volts to come in, and then there's a, a place for the circuit to complete itself by going to ground. And then I've got these little pins here. Sometimes, um, instead of soldering tiny wires, especially when you've got a lot more of them, you can put these pins into the small holes, also called pins, on the chip, and just solder that in at the short end, and then you can wire wrap your wire around the other end. But well, we're not going to do that. And we've got um, a little piece of printed circuit board. So the, the little piece of printed circuit board I cut off a larger piece. I used a Dremel for that. You can also um, use something like a, um, a box cutting knife uh, to score it, go back and forth and back and forth, and then use a pair of pliers to snap it. Always use eye protection when you do something like that. And you want to end up with something like this. And the reason it's like this is because so you, I'm showing you the side with the copper traces on it. And so here are copper traces that go horizontally, one at each end, and copper traces that go vertically. So anything you plug into um, this right here that's got, uh, that's, that's got a, a copper strip that goes horizontally, anything that you plug into any of those holes will connect to the same part of the circuit. But these uh, sets of holes that are connected by a little piece of uh, conductive copper here, each one of those is also uh, a place where if you plug something in, it will plug into a circuit. It, it won't connect to this. They're, they're separated. And it won't connect to the ones next to them. And I'll show you how that works. And then the other uh, component. My, my perf board is not so sophisticated. It's just like it's all, they're all connected or something. Like they all, they're all coppered. So I'll have to work around that somehow. Put them on different well, lines or um, something. Okay. Um, yeah. They're probably not all connected. They're probably all separate. And you need to, to use a wire to connect them, right? Okay. Maybe. Well, I have a blank perf board and then I have these pre-printed circuit boards. Yeah. Okay, so the printed circuit board on one side, it's just blank. It's got yeah. holes in it. And the yeah. other side, you see these little copper things. Yeah, and they're all just right next to each other. It's like a straight grid. Okay, but are they? is each one unconnected from the next one? 
Is the connection? Oh yes, they are unconnected from each okay. other. Okay. So then just, I use wire. You just use wires to make those connections. Thank this you. Makes it, this makes it a little bit easier. We're going to make yeah. the, We're going to put push stuff through the side that doesn't have the copper. Got um, it. So and what thank about you. this kind. Whoa, cool. That, so that's a prototyping board. Okay. What do so, I do with that? So okay. the prototyping board, you're probably not going to want to put in a little object. You're going to want to get some of this printed circuit board and cut a little piece of it off as I've done here. Because the perf board is, of course, much larger. So this is a... Right. The, uh, the prototyping board, you can prototype this circuit using jumper wires. Um, to test it. This is when we want to put it in something. So, you know, what I've got to put it in here is I've got a, um, a wooden sake box that I got online for about four bucks. And I've got, you can see it's it's been used before. I've got a um, three times triple A battery pack that's got wires coming out of it. And I drilled a hole in the box and I'm going to put poke, poke the LED through that hole after I've got it set up with the Teensy and so everything can fit in here and then I've decided I'm going to put a half a ping pong ball on top of it to diffuse the light and then I'm going to art it up so maybe when we do this again in a couple of weeks I will have arted it up but the idea is to just um, Pick an object that you want to put this in. And of course, this battery pack is fairly large, so uh, it's got to be fairly large. You can also make something. I like to use paper clay. I guess we're seeing this backwards. But if you look for creative paper clay online, you can buy a, a big chunk that goes a long way uh, for about 10 bucks. And you can just you can mold that while it's wet. It's like clay, and uh, keep your fingers wet while you're molding it. And then in a couple of days, it dries out pretty solid and it's very light. Um, so the idea is that we're going to make something that's going to fit into something. Um, and the components here, I left one component out, which is the um, 270 ohm um, resistors. So. Uh, those are going to, to go between the leads of each of the R, G, and B LEDs and, um, and power. So it's going to be a kind of constrictor on that power so that uh, more voltage does not go into the LED than, than it can um, withstand. And there's a formula uh, called Ohm's Law for figuring out what voltage to use. The, um, the LEDs have spec sheets and um, they are measured in, I believe, milliamps. And so the, the formula is voltage equals current, which is amps times resistance, which is ohm. So simple algebraic substitution. If, um, if you know uh, two of those, you can figure out the other, other one pretty easily. So, um, given all these parts, I want to just uh, take a minute and switch here to screen sharing. Hello, screen sharing. Uh, what do we want here? I think I want my desktop. Yeah. Oops. Uh, we've got the little uh, infinite regress there. That's kind of cool, huh? Whoa, um, that's this... amazing. Howard, you're making cyber art. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know what? Um, this is an idea, something to do in the future. Are you now getting something else? Are you getting the document? Yes. Okay. So if you go to that URL, you will find this document, and it's got the illustration. So you can see I've pulled the oh, cool. a battery pack and the Teensy Duino 
out of the sculpture there. And so I've got the complete parts list, the tools. I've even got the code here for doing stuff. We'll go by, back uh, to that. So this has got links to everything you need. This originally um, came from uh, the, that, that blinking sculpture that I showed you. And as I said, it's all kind of stuffed inside there. This is what it looks like when it's unstuffed. You see that the battery pack connects to the Teensy. The Teensy's got, in this case, I've got a red, a green, a blue in each eye. I've got two eyes so that there are six pins. So I've added those pins there and wire wrapped them. But in this case, we're only going to use three. We can solder them. And this is a close-up of what the, the little printed circuit board with a uh, LED and all of the resistors and connections looks like. Again, you can go through this at your own speed. This is a, a little bit of a close-up here showing how the um, wires are coming in to the teensy. That's the, gra that's the ground and one of the power? And yes. Power. Okay. Yes. And so this is how the pins are connected. The, the, the connections go from the digital pins on the Teensy. And you have, if you have a different Arduino, it will also have digital pins. And you just want to make sure that the numbers you use match up with the numbers you use in your sketch. So if you look really closely here, that one of them has the, the, the 4, the 5, and the 6 are the red are, are, are the green, blue, and red. And so on the Teensy, there's actually this diagram that I showed you that shows you where to connect. But look on yours for the voltage in, VIN, and the ground. Those are the two things that are um, taking the current from your battery and closing the circuit by going back to ground. Then notice that I have circled the one, two, three on the Teensy. Those are the, the digital pins I'm going to use. There's some other pins there that are not digital pins. <coughs> so I'm not going to use them. And neither should you. And then here's the box I got. Inside of the box, I, I carved out a little bit of space so that I can scoot this battery pack in and out comfortably. Mark, this is what the circuit looks like when it's breadboarded. And you can follow along and do that on the breadboard here, but and come back to this when you want to make something that fits inside something. Here's what that particular radio shack, which is um, catalog number 276170. Whoa, that's, will you type that into the chat? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, well, it's in the document. Oh, you're per perfect. There's links to all of the parts in the document. Thank you, Howard. Here's the close-up that I was showing you before. Yeah. Um, things are connected. Yep. So I'm going to start by taking the longest lead and connecting it to that bunch at the top, which I'm later going to connect to the ground on the Teensy. And then I'm going to take each of the other leads, the R, G, and B leads, and put them into one of the holes in one of these verticals here. And then I'm going to put a resistor in and jump that over to here. So one end of the resistor is connected to the LED, and the other end is connected to this, which is then going to go to power. And you can do this by using wires to connect those, those holes, uh, Justin. Yeah. Mark, you can use, the, use your proto board. To... So this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take the longest lead of the LED, and I'm going to connect it to the. You mean the you mean the ground lead, not 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 the red lead. That's right. The longest okay. lead, the ground lead, the common ground. You uh -huh. know, sometimes the they sell these LEDs as having com not common power but common voltage in, in which case, re reversing what you connect to ground and power works. In this case, you're not going to blow anything up. It, yeah. it'll, just, it, it'll just work. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to get out of this. Uh, sorry about that. We're back in our infinite regress. Hello. I'm out of that. Okay. So see how I've kind of spread the, the leads out quite a bit here from the way you get them from the, the package? That, that helps with doing this. 
and remember I'm going to use the side that does not have the copper on it. So here's the side with the copper on it. I'm going to flip it over. You know, you can you can bend these leads to to make it easier to fit things in. And so I'm just taking this one and I'm putting it through here. See how it's going through that one? And then I'm going to fit these other three in so that they each go into one of these rows here without uh, pulling it out, without pulling the common ground pin out of that hole. It takes a little maneuvering, but you can do it. See how that's done? See how that looks? Wow. Okay, that takes a little bit of messing around before you get it. Um, so when you do that, after you do that, um, usually you want to have your LED as close to the board as you can. So I'm pushing it in here, and then I'm taking the LED leads and I'm bending them away from each other so it's not a problem when I solder it, but also so it, that it keeps it in. And because I'm the kind of amateur solderer who doesn't like to do things in too complicated a manner, I am going to next solder these in before I add other components. So I'm putting it in my helping hands here. I love this autofocus camera. Isn't this cool? Wow. Okay, you can see that, right? Got these. Okay, so um, I'm going to quick solder these. One thing is surprising. I have like this one, which says um, seven color blinking LED, and it only has three um, uh, pins. Oh, four pins. It has only three pins, and it says seven colors blinking LED. I don't know how. Okay, um, you want you want to get an RGB LED, and the, and you know for the next time they're they're cheap. They're you know pennies. Um, there there are links in that document. Yeah, yeah, I I went to the Radio Shack shop. They didn't have it. Yeah, they didn't have it. I had to buy something different, but I found one today with four pins because it just turns out it's like uh, they didn't have the right size. They only had smaller ones. I actually called in advance and said, "Do you have RGB LEDs?" And they said yes. I said ten millimeters, and they said yes. And then I went in, and they're like, "We don't have ten millimeter RGB LEDs." So Radio Shack is a hilarious. Uh, amazing place. Uh, yeah. You know, I just order all this stuff from Made of Fruit. Yeah. Um, so I've I have soldered these in. I think it looks like I'm not really bridging anything, although that's kind of the, not the neatest solder job you would hope for. And I'm going to put my little things that I've clipped. In an e-waste pile. Notice I'm wearing my glasses here when I clip things, and I hold on to the thing that I'm clipping when I clip it, so it doesn't go flying elsewhere. So, next, so y'all got that done? No, not yet. But you, I think you know. Okay, next you want to take your 270 ohm resistors, and, and you know. Uh, Resistors in this kind of circuit are uh, not that precise, you know. So if you have 300 or 330 ohms, those will work as well. Mark, how are you doing? Are you able to prototype this? Oh, you don't have the right LED, is that right? Well, we're gonna we're gonna do this over again. In a couple of weeks, so maybe it'll. Everybody will have everything they need at that time. Um, but this kind of gives you a advanced look at it. What I'm doing? Well, I'm waiting for Justin. How are you? How are you doing, Justin? On that? Getting there. 
Okay, I am taking my resistors and I'm bending them like this so that they can fit easily into the board. Now, Justin, yeah. you don't, um, are you going to put them through a board or are you just going to connect them directly? I'm going to connect them directly, you know, wire to wire on the other side of the board. Okay, so don't forget you want to cut a little piece of shrink wrap before uh -huh. you make it the connection. The main thing is to remember to have your shrink wrap on it before you solder it, right? Yeah. So that after you, so like you could take the LED lead and solder it directly to one of these um, leads of the resistor, but you want to make sure that you're going to shrink wrap that afterwards so that there's nothing okay. sticking out that could could short circuit and also help strengthen it. First, you're going to want to solder it, definitely. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is that we want, you might not be able to see it in its exactitude, but I, I've connected the common ground to this here. Oh, I did it on the wrong side. I guess that doesn't matter. I'll solder those together. Um, and then oh. the other ones I put so that... There's Wait, what do you mean you did it on the wrong side? What's on the wrong side well, of what? Well, you know, this trace here is horizontally connected. See? Oh, I see. And this trace here is not, but it's simple enough for me to make the connection with okay. a little solder. Um so, uh, but each of these, see, I've spaced them so that there's the R, and then it skips one, and then there's the G and the B. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter, but it kind of helps me remember because, okay, so because the next thing I want to do is I want to take one end of the resistor, and I want to put it through the hole in the same row, as the R, the G, and the B, and the other end, oh no, that's not going to work at all. Good, you've given me time to catch up, Howard. I feel much better. You sound like me. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, did I mess it up because I even clipped it off. Oh wow. Let's see if I've got... Uh, Another piece that would work. You need another light if you cut it off, or you mean another piece of perf board? I've got another piece of perf board that would work. So, I think I've got one here. Okay. So, I'm going to... When you order your RGB LEDs... What are a little a, a little bunch of them? So uh, when something yeah. like this happens, uh, you can go get yeah. one out. Okay, so I'm going to really quickly reproduce what I've done here. You can see I've I've messed with this one before. Uh, the heck with that! I'm going to get a straight one. Well, I don't have two seventy. Because when I, I looked, I thought I saw 470 and 330, so I have 330s. Hopefully that won't over-resist, uh, right? Yeah. No. Well, over-resist means it will get less power, so it's not going to hurt it any. It just it's just going to be dimmer. It just won't be as bright. Right. Okay. But it won't be bad. So again, I guess uh, repetition is not a bad idea. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it through the perf board correctly this time. So that this goes to here. That's connected. wait. You're off camera. Oops. So that this long one goes to this one that's horizontally connected, and so that I have I can jump from here to here, and these yep. are se these are separate. So one's going to go in here. And um, boy, don't I look adept having messed with this and messed with this. It used to take me a lot longer to get this done. So I'm, I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put all these through here. Uh, 
This time I'm doing it backwards. <laughs> You're off camera again, just telling you. It must be the pataphysical garb. Yeah, uh, the hat. Thank you for the, the warning. I'm going to try this again, but this time I'm going to put it through the right side of the perf board. Oh. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I think one thing that I, I tell my, my, my students, Jeff probably understands this, is that when you're, you're messing with the, the technology, you're not really on, on the bleeding edge um, unless you fall off it. Ha. So once you fall off, you just uh, mess around until you can get it to work. That's my philosophy. Yeah. Um, so, this way, see, I've got the wires are on the same side as the copper. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to quickly solder this. Good thing I'm a bit of a quicker solderer than I used to be. Well, it's good practice to mess up. Yeah. That's what... Spare parts are, are your friend. So I'm going to... For those of you who are learning soldering, you want to heat the thing you're soldering too so that it will take the solder when, when you put it on. You might also consider getting one of these little guys. It's a... Oh. Clip-on heat sink. Clip-on heat sink. Let me yes. see that more clearly. That way I can just clip it onto the thing I'm soldering uh, uh, between the the point where I'm going to solder and the component itself. And so that, I, that way I keep it from from uh, blowing up my little component because I'm clumsy at soldering and I can take a long time. Okay, but, that's that's good because uh, that, that's true of me as well. I've definitely, I've definitely shorted out things from bumping into them too many times. It's a heat, real risk. Heat sink. I'm going to get myself a heat sink. Okay. Heat so, shrink, you mean? Heat sink. Huh. A place where heat goes. Yeah. Okay, I'm clipping. I'm confident. Oh, that's what that was called. I see. Yeah. Yeah, the idea is that it's like pouring water down a sink. So you're pouring heat into it instead. Heat sink, got it. I've heard of those. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, notice I was a little quick, and my soldering was a little sloppy, but nothing is... You're a little down, you're a little off screen, but I think we can see it now. Nothing is connected to anything it shouldn't be connected to, but it's a little sloppy. So now, back to where I was. I want to take each of these that are not the common, the other ones, and I want to put one end in the same row as one of the leads from the LED. See? And then I'm going to use, I'm going to jump that over to this other thing that's got two holes in it. Of course, I'm going to do it from the other side. So this is where the, the red one is. So I'm going to put one, let me see if I can show that. See where that... See if you can shift a little bit to your right, Howard. There we are. Oh, cool. There we are. Okay, so see where that lead is going in? I want to use the same vertical row there. To uh, put a resistor in. One one of the resistor. One, one end of one of the resistors goes in the same vertical row in the back. And then the other one jumps over to one of these rows here. See, these are also vertical, and we'll get to that later when we connect it. And so, see, I've got those there. I'm just going to quick, quick solder those in. A more experienced solder would probably solder more things and put less solder on it in a shorter period of time. That, that one was better. One of these snips is a good thing to have. Okay. You want to snip these so they don't 
distort you to something else. So I'm going to do that with each of these resistors. I'm going to bend it in a little U, and I'm going to put one end to one of the other leads that's not the common lead, like this, and one of them into one of these two hold thingies here, like this. And I'll bend them over like this. And then I'm going to do it again. Oh, boy. Um, this may have to be a two-parter. <laughs> Unless you want to do... I'll go longer, if you don't mind. And, and it doesn't matter. Polarity doesn't matter on resistors. So, okay, that's not the right place. There's one there, one there, and one needs to go here. So you're doing one resistor for each of them? Yeah, one for each lead. One for the R, one for the G, and one for the B. R. G, B. Okay, so. So are these quick, quick? Okay, so I now know that this build along takes a little bit longer than your usual. Because we have some stuff to do here. Okay, so I've got all the resistors and the and the LED put into this. We now want to solder some wires to lead off to our battery and to the teensy so um, it helps to have a, a red a green and a blue wire which uh -huh. okay I do have a little thing for pieces of wire that are sticking around. Don't seem to work for anything else. You know, so it's, uh, it depends on how large your thing is and how that you're going to put it in, your object to art. And uh, how far you want it to be from this. So I'm going to fit this all into a pretty small space. So I'm not going to use a lot. But I have to say, I mess this up a lot. So uh, you don't know, leave room for goofs. Uh, so you can uh, redo stuff. So I've got a red, a green. It's encouraging to hear you say that, Howard. <laughs> uh, well, that's what that's what you learn when you you're you're a beginner like we are. So I've got a red, a green, a a blue, and a black wire, and I have to go run and get the special tool for stripping it. No, maybe I can use this. We'll see whether this this works. This is not as where is it? It is. This is a little. This is the cheap version that you get at Radio Shack. You can get a, a forty-dollar version that works much better. But it's to to strip this very thin wire. This is I'm using wire wrap wire. You don't have to use wire that that, that is that this thin. And you just uh, huh. It may not be working for us here. You have to have the right touch. So there I have actually stripped a piece of this wire here. This is the black one. So that's um, what I want to run to ground. Because the red is hot. That goes to, uh, to power. So that comes from the common ground. 
And this is where it is. Here, remember, this, I had the one longest one on this top row here alone. So I'm going to put this piece of wire into there. And solder that down. I don't think I need any more solder. I'll just remelt the solder I already put in there. All right. So you see how that goes? I've got a, this black wire. I stripped one end, and I've connected it to the common ground. So then I want the red wire that goes to power. And OK, that, that's going to come later. Let's take the red, let's take the RGB wire. So I'm going to strip a little bit of the red here. Are you all following me on this? Well, at our own, I mean, at my own pace. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. so, so I stripped this red wire. Remember I said that the the red lead was the lone one on one side of the common lead. So that's this one here. So see where I've got the other end of the resistor here at the end for this? I'm sticking this wire up through that. Uh, I think we should be still going out a little bit. Did you have a question, Nina? Nope. Is this all making sense to you? Not really. Okay, you know what? Next time next time it will make more sense. And I've got the document that shows you step by step how to do it. So That's I'm just going to remelt this. But anyway, my dad is doing it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, good. Well, you know, just watching, you learn how to do this stuff. Oh. Okay, why am I? I, I, I got to kind of hold this down. Okay, it wants some solder on it. And where did I put the solder? Oh, man. The solder has gone somewhere, but I've got some more. This is more pedophysical than I thought it would be. <laughs> okay. Isn't it always? I uh, know. I just uh, I did a lot of prep for this, and I figured it would go, go more quickly than it, it has. And what's ground going to right now? It's just going to the perf board, right? Yeah. We haven't connected the other end of anything to anything yet. Got it. I decided to skip the perf board and go a little experimental with mine. So I yeah. just built, like, the resistors directly onto the um, the thing, skipping the perf board because I don't have the right one and I, you know. Okay, we'll yeah, yeah. You can do that and using the heat shrink. Notice that I broke yeah, my... No. Uh, I broke my soldering connection, and I have to do it again. Okay. Using the, the cheapo version, the forty-dollar version works much better, but this one is only like five bucks. Okay. This is where I wanted to go. Dang, that looks like it's soldered in there. Okay, and so I've got the black one that's going to go to ground, and I've got the red one that's going to go to the red pin on, on your teensy, and then I've got the
green one. So RGB, the next one in line is the green one. Mm. And you know, the nice thing about Arduino is that if I have this wrong, I can correct it in software. It depends, just you, you tell it which address to send the electrons to, which pin number. Man, I'm a serial loser of solder here. Okay. And that leaves the blue one. Strip one end with this inexpensive, but not the best stripping tool. Wire stripping tool. And see, I'm just uh, getting it up next to uh, that blob of solder that I've got there, and I'm going to remelt it. So that it's The silent group meditation around yeah. solder. <laughs> Concentrate on not bridging the copper traces and not burning your flesh. The two <laughs> most important aspects of this. So I've got um, all the leads coming from this that we need to come from this. So the next step is. Um, connecting this to the Teensy Duino. So I have a proposition to make uh, for you. If we can find a, a time that works for all of us, how about we go from here and do another session and connect this to your, your Duino and your power? Well, or let's regather and take stock of where people are, because it sounds like some of these guys might be going out to buy different gear or, you know... So maybe they can catch up via the docs, or we can see where people are at. You mean, uh, I think I'll do, I'm going to do another one starting from the beginning. Okay, yeah, uh, okay, great. That'd be fine by me. That, now that I have the doc, I'll go uh, make sure I've got the right components. Um, what I've been playing with is this uh, uh, piggyback board. Uh, for prototyping, but hey, I might as well just go ahead and grab some perf board and get set up to just build something. Okay, right. so, so um, when would when would work for other people? How about um, the, the week of the twenty fourth? On the twenty fifth, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, or Thursday, the 25th, 26th, or 27th? Would that work for everybody, any of those? I'm cool for um, this hour of the evening, pretty much any day that's comfortable for the rest of the folks. Justin, Mark? I'm uh, soldering. Uh, let's see. <laughs> We're looking at the calendar. And uh, Wednesday or Thursday, 6 o'clock would work. Okay, Wednesday or Thursday at 6 o'clock? So uh, Wednesday, much better. No. Okay, 6 o'clock. No, I don't want to do 26 or 27. Why? So that's 6 o'clock your time on the 26th? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, great. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna, I will create the geek out and you should automatically get a notice and you should grab a spot on it and we'll 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 go from from here on on that excellent